Hello, in this episode, we will do a um, credit card developer model using principal component analysis to detect credit card fraud using the Kale credit card fraud detection data. And um, just to recap on anomaly detection process, um, you train a model that does a healthy chest image. Okay? And, um, and, and once you have that image and you actually have the actual patient chest data, um, you can compare it against the model. And if it's um, very different, then you detect the anomaly. In Spirit, we'll do the same thing with the credit card. Okay? So we train a model using the normal transactions only. Okay? So that will give us a model that how a normal transaction would look like given the characteristics like the loan, uh, the transaction amounts and, and many other things. Then you actually have the actual transactions, um, the test data, and the model predicted uh, transactions, and you compare them. Um, and if it's uh, vastly different, uh, then um, it is an anomaly, meaning it's a likely to be fraudulent um, activity and you detect. So, uh, so <clears throat> Recalling the dimensional reduction and low dimensional approximation, here's what we do. We do have an original data of X with uh, many columns indicating various um, characteristics of the transactions. And we have many, many observations. In Kaggle data, there were more than 280,000 transactions. So these are very long, right? Uh, so you transpose it, so multiply the transpose with that. You get a correlation matrix of that original data. It's a P by P. Um, I think we had um, 31, but one was time which we dropped and the other one was class we dropped. So we will have 29 columns here of the um, variables and uh, 29 by 29 is the correlation matrix. Okay. From that, we'll get the eigenvectors. There will be P eigenvectors coming out, uh, but for approximation, we'll select only a few of them. Let's say we pick just two, okay? So there are two eigen, first largest eigenvalues, eigenvectors um, we'll pick, we call it VK. So if you multiply to your original data, the VK, and then the transpose of it, VK transposed, it will give an approximated data that looks close to the, ideally, approximate data, but the VKs came from, well, the data that only has uh, normal transactions, then these eigenvectors are picking up only the characteristics of the normal transactions. So this approximation data works well for normal transactions. But if you actually your original data has like um, um, fraudulent transactions that are not likely to be well captured or uh, modeled by these eigenvectors, so hence the approximation is likely to be terrible. Uh, so and, and that we tag as uh, a normal. So here's conceptually, you have the original data, you train the um, eigenvectors and pick K of them, which is called encoder, and then multiply with the decoder also. You get an approximation, compare that X hat and X, um, and, and this VK is important, they come from only normal transaction data, okay? You shouldn't mix the fraudulent data here. So when the error is large, it's because the VKs are not capturing it well, and hence uh, it's likely to be um, a, a fraudulent transaction. So this is the idea of um, a credit card fraud detection, how we do using the principal component analysis. Okay. Let's see how that works um, using the principal component analysis. Okay, so um, we already had in data exploration episode uh, how to upload the data, import the libraries, set the environment. So we are not gonna um, do this for too long. Okay. But we will have to, um, it's better to upload your data uh, on, on Google Drive and read it from there. That's much faster. And um, read it in your Panda data frame. I am already standard scaling. But one thing that's very important, as I said, is that when you standardize your loan amount, um, you use only the training data mean and standard deviation to scale it, not only the training data, but also your test data so that there's no look ahead bias. Okay. You can check. Okay. So the mean of the train data is close to zero. The standard deviation is one. The test data, we are not using the test data mean and standard deviation. So the mean is slightly larger 
but still reasonably small. Um, and also the uh, center deviation is not exactly one, but it's kind of around one. So it's um, pretty good. So let's just have the fraudulent dimension and we use a low dimensional approximation from the principal component analysis. And let's just, um, so that is the linear algebra uh, package. Uh, the dimension being true of the uh, dimensional approximation. We get the um, X train data eigenvector. So we first have to compute the correlation matrix, transpose of X and X, and then get the eigenvectors and select just the two largest eigenvectors. Multiply that will get you the VK times VK transpose. It's a 29 by 29 um, square matrix. Now, if you multiply that to your original test data, which where we want to test the performance, and this test data contains both fraudulent and normal transactions, right? So let's do a reconstruction, the test data with the VKVT predictions and compute the error, meaning X test and the prediction, compute the mean square error. And, and you can have the reconstruction error here, the mean square error. I can do the summary statistics for the full sample or just the true class being normal or fraudulent. Let's just keep for the first sample, um, for example, um, the, the mean square error here is about um, 0.93. Uh, for the normal sample is 2.89. But look at the fraudulent sample. The mean is 25. Okay, okay. So the mean here was a 0.89 as well. Um, but here, um, the mean of the fraudulent sample is much, much larger. It's in the mean square error is very, very large. And that's because we train the eigenvectors uh, from the normal transaction. It poorly captures the fraudulent sample. So you can do some post analysis like the accuracy measures like the RVC curve, precision and recurs. First, let's have a scatter plot. So um, here's a plot of the, um, the group of true class, um, the true class, yeah, being fraudulent or normal, uh, you can um, plot the reconstruction error. Uh, and you can see that uh, number of dots here. And you can plot a threshold and below that it's uh, not tag, above it it's tag. You can raise the red bar to detect more, or fewer or points and such. I guess it's difficult to see, but um, if you look in the confusion matrix by this, um, uh, mean square errors grouped by the true class. Okay, the confusion matrix will tell you here, 40, uh, 44,000 of the 56,000 are correctly tagged here as um, normal and here it's a uh, fraud, but there's some type one and type two errors um, and truly um, innocent, but being tagged as fraudulent. So if you're inconveniencing honest transaction customers and, and auditing, for example, yeah. but you miss only 10 of them. So, and if you don't like it, you can change the threshold um, to be, um, so here was 0 0.9 because our mean was 0 0.89, but maybe you should raise it a bit higher to 0.15 or something. So what happens when you change that, um, that you can see from the, um, receiver operating characteristics and the area under the curve, which we already did. So the RVC curve here plotting, um, you can see that our model is indeed very good. So the non-informative half have random split, the 45 degree line is here relative to that. If you increase the threshold, um, um, then the, the false positive rate will decrease first. Uh, eventually um, the true positive rate will also drop, but that's uh, much later. And so, um, and the area under the curve is 94%, uh, which is pretty good. And so this is how you um, um, do a fraud uh, detection uh, using the PCA method. Thank you for watching this episode.